action. Belarus Telegram Revolution protesters confronts bottles and shields. After the alleged re-election victory of pro-Chinese President Alexander Lukashenko, protests have been forming and continue to form thanks in large part to Telegram. The fact that Twitter is not a part of the story might be poignant for some who remember a Twitter that once supported the Iranian hashtag Green Revolution, hashtag Iran election now no longer being a platform of choice for any form of dissent from the land state and corpo state enforced code of allowable orthodox views and actions. This is from the Washington Times. Telegram Revolution app helps drive Belarus protests. Every day, like clockwork, to-do lists for these protesting against Belarus's authoritarian leader appear in the popular Telegram messaging app. They lay out goals, give times, and locations of rallies with business-like precision and offer spirited encouragement. Today will be one more important day in the fight for our freedom. Tectonic shifts are happening on all fronts, so it's important not to slow down. A message in one of Telegram's so-called channels read Tuesday morning expanding the strike 11 supporting the cupola that's theater 1900 gathering at the independent square the app has become an indispensable tool in coordinating the unprecedented mass protests that have rocked belarus since august 9th when election officials announced president alexander lukashenko had won a landslide victory to extend his 26-year rule in a vote widely seen as rich. Ah, Belarus Telegram Revolution protesters. This is what the Google News has to say. We have Telegram Revolution from New York Times. An app helps drive Belarus protests. From Voice of America, Telegram app helps drive Belarus protests. From the New India Express, Telegram Revolution, how a social media app helped drive protests in Belarus post-presidential polls. From Red Herring, Belarus's Telegram Revolution hangs in balance as dot dot dot, (coughs) but that's from one day ago. From Wired three days ago, In Belarus, a protest movement unlike any other is on the brink of victory. From BBC News, Belarus election. How next to channel bypass news blackout. This is from one week ago. From nine hours ago. Can fatal moments seal an autocrat's fate? Now, before we get to that story, let's get a little bit of a perspective here about the Belarus situation. The Belarus lies between the Moscow's over here and the Warsaw's over there. Right between almost more on the Warsaw side but not by much. If you could look at it the midpoint between Moscow and Warsaw is probably somewhere where you see my cursor lined up and uh, Moscow is... let me let me Let's see if I can get this in here. You can see where Moscow is up here. And we can see somewhere, somewhere roughly thereabouts, probably. It's going to be about the middle between <coughs> Moscow and Warsaw. And in between there is Minsk. And that is Belarus. And going the other way, interestingly enough, you have Kiev over here. And you have Vilnius of Lithuania. And look where Minsk is. Now, in this instance, again, Minsk is not... Well, in this, if you look at the major arteries, you can see that, once again, Minsk, it's, it's, it's a fundamental hub. It is a fundamental hub. And is a hub also that there's another entity that has its tentacles in. And that is all the ways. All the ways down. Keep going. Now you go China. You got China. China, so oh, I don't want to do that. So 
So that's the situation that Belarus finds itself in. And that is the dra- backdrop. Yeah. This story says, Can fatal moments seal an autocrat's fate? Opposition supporters protest against disputed presidential election results as independence at Independence Square in Minsk, Belarus, August 18, 2020. Autocrats fall when people lose their fear, and that moment can be signaled dramatically by a simple jeer, as it was last week when Europe's so-called last dictator, Belarus's Alexander Lukashenko, was booed during a speech at a mix factory by workers who chanted for him to step down. Until you kill me, there will be no leather elections, Lukashenko told the sullen crowd. Sullen crowd. Shut yourself! They don't sound sullen. I don't know. Sullen is like kind of, I don't know, maybe ticked off crowd. Shut yourself! One emboldened worker, worker shouted at him as he left the stage, a brazen statement no one would have dared utter to his face before the current turmoil rocking Belarus. The visit was meant to have demonstrated Lukashenko's strong support from a core group of Belarusians, as analysts. The factory, which makes tractor wheels, wheels, oh man, more wheel factories having wheelish tracks political issues. Oh, that's unfortunate. We understand. Hey, in America, we've had something similar. Is one of the large Soviet-like state-run industrial plants that have in the past been pro Lukashenko strongholds for veteran observers and journalists and... uh, Well, whatever. It was... Okay. I'll add this last part. Debacle at the factory was reminiscent of the fall 32 years ago of another European autocrat, Nicolao Ceausescu. And that's what they're wondering. Did he... Did he? Did he? And there's another sources here, multiple sources here. I'll tell you, tell me, there will be no elections! President of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, says that he does not intend to hold repeated elections. You know what repeated elections are like. They're very, uh, how you say, hassled. They're hassled. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Elections are for, for wimpies, wimp, wimp, wimps. Elections are for the wimpers. I am the president for life, and you love me and you need me. I am Belarusa. I am Belarus. I am Belarus! Dude, listen. I wouldn't even have a job at 7-Eleven if I didn't have this job. Y'all gotta just let me die in this job. Listen, man. Come on. Do me a solid. I'm old. She's I'm old. I'm old. Ha <laughs> ha. Alrighty, and then anyway, we move on here to Sky News factory workers heckle and boo Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko. The long-standing Belarusian leader is facing the biggest challenge to his 26-year rule amid a wave of mass protests and strikes. <laughs> He's an angry guy. Factory workers have heckled and booed Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko, who declared there would be no new elections. I'll tell you, come back! Wow. Uh, the long-standing leader is facing the biggest challenges. Okay, I already said that. We had elections already. Until you kill me, there will be no other elections. Okay. And a video of merge of workers yelling, Go away! As a president. There he is. Go away! Go away! Go away! Oh, that's awesome. awesome Belarus Steelers says there will be no elections until you kill me. So there you go. And, uh, and here's something interesting. Belarus... Protests cast shadow over China's Belt and Road ambitions as Lukashenko refuses to relinquish power. China's economic presence in Belarus has grown in recent years as it looks to extend its influence on Eurasia and Minsk tries to reduce dependence on Russia. See that right there? See that part? Take that in. Minsk tries to reduce dependence on Russia. Now let's take in this other part. Extend its influence in Eurasia. Whose influence? China. China. Minx. China. Minx. Dependence on Russia. See the dynamics at play here, folks? You see the dynamics at play. But analysts say anti-government demonstrations that have roiled the Eastern European country could compromise China's belt and road investments. Putin bets on Lukashenko keeping power in Belarus for now. (coughs) Russian president, this is from uh, 
Reuters. Russian President Vladimir Putin believes that Belarus leader Alexander Lukashenko will probably cling to power for now despite protest against him and is content to let him sweat it out, two sources close to the Kremlin said. Lukashenko, a long-time standing but truculent Moscow ally, has been buffeted by nearly two weeks of street protests which have loosened his grip on power in a country many Russians regard as another Russian region in all but name. Yeah, basically. That, the two sources said, suits the Kremlin. It is keen to deal with a weakened Lukashenko who has resisted and sometimes publicly railed against Moscow's office of deeper political and economic integration. And they have every reason to believe that uh, whatever is rising is actually going to be very pro-Russian. The Kremlin did not immediately reply to a request for comment. Putin has offered Lukashenko assistance if needed, but the Kremlin said on Wednesday, it's all no need to help Belarus militarily or otherwise for now. They are, listen, this is, this is the bottom line here, and I'm going to take this back down for you here. Just get a little background here. You got that little Belarus is there, and uh, this is a beautiful situation for Russia. Uh, and I think in this case, Americans and Russians can kind of agree that if they can knock out the pro-Chinese guy, then hey, let's do that. So I think that the, this guy's nays are numbered, but the Russians are like, they don't want to be the ones that topple a uh, leader in Belarus. They don't want to deal with that headache. They don't want to become the target. So, and uh, I'm hoping that the Americans don't fall in. I mean, just, just leave Belarus alone. Just don't fuck with Belarus. Seriously, America. Just leave that alone. And I think we can all agree, Russia and America, like, if you live in America, you should agree with this. If you live in Russia, you should agree with this. Uh, uh, only if you live in those countries. I mean, if you live in other countries, you may have other reasons to not agree. Very practical, mind you. Uh, but if you live in America and Russia, the idea of uh, democratic movement, whatever that is or isn't, you be the judge. But if you have this type of movement in which someone gets in power that is more pro-Russian than Chinese, that's good for everyone, including America. You don't want the Chinese in, in these areas anymore. You want to you you root these folks out. You want it to be Russian in here, not Chinese. It's definitely... Definitely, we're gonna we're just we're just gonna go with that. So there you go. That's that part. Now, I want to get back, and I want to talk what I started in the beginning, and that was what I was talking about was Twitter in Iran election and Green Revolution, and I was part of that whole thing. I was at one point. There was a period of time, maybe a two or three hour period of time, I, I tell you the truth. It'll never, I don't know if it'll ever be documented, but uh, I was uh, in the top 100 in the world as far as getting retweets, and and it, it was because of the Iran election, and I was able to get vast, I'm, I'm very good at collecting data and getting it out there, and I was able to aggregate data i was able to aggregate the iran election data all of it and i was able to get it out there on twitter and i was able to get people coverage and noticed and, and i was a part of all that and i was really working hard not for any other reason i mean i didn't even realize that i was in that category until a couple of people pointed it out to me uh and it was I mean, it was tragic in the end. You know, it was almost when 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 this uh, young woman Nada, when she died, when they just shot her in the head. Uh, when they began to bring in the people from probably other parts of the region, these were not these were not locals. These weren't Iranians that came in and did the thugging that happened. And I saw a lot of stuff, and uh, this stuff is not a good. It didn't end well, but uh, Twitter is what made that whole green revolution possible and there were geopolitical reasons why that revolution never got the support that it that it could have or should have gotten from outside sources <coughs> but that was twitter twitter was vital it was cutting edge i was part of twitter i did a lot of stuff i made money on twitter I'm, I mean, Twitter was, was, was once where it was at. It was where the pulse of 
of of the real was like the whole panoply of the real not just this it's now just basically become this weird kind of static boring orthodox place it's not where the revolutionaries hang out anymore twitter is is where the the orthodox hang out there are the priest kings and queens and whatnot hang out the uh the accepted uh, uh moral supremacists of the current age in the current time that is what twitter now represents it is like where old people go to die except they're young so it's like young people decided to get old a lot faster <laughs> it's like i'm like 52 so young people decided to leapfrog over me and go right to their 80s and be like those get off my get off my lawn you crazy kids they went right to that that's what twitter is it's boring 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 and uh so now <clears throat> other other i've been using telegram for years by the way as a matter of fact i've cut down on a lot of my social medias and telegram is one of the few things that I held on to because I have connection to human beings. There's 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 a lot of different ways to connect on Telegram. Most of the ways that I connect is really I have one on one connections and I have and I have a few channels that I follow as well and other things, but by and large, you know, Telegram is is better than Twitter for me. <laughs> you you can be very selective in in what you get and how you get and there's very little restrictions on on what you do there. At least for now, so it's the place to be for me. So with that in mind, I'm going to end this segment. I thank you all for watching. This has been Action! Belarus Telegram Revolution protesters confront bottles and shields. And I'll just add uh, very quickly, the article that I originally started off with, it does have in it talking about how what the protesters went out, that there were uh, uh, reports of uh, what police throwing bottles and then there were gives in their shields to, to muscle the protesters so so that statement that that video that i never well there, listen i'm now telling you about it so it's not bait and switch it's legit so this is it this is the end of this uh trigger talks and news uh you're gonna see these uh whenever one of these pops which is on weekdays monday through friday 7 a.m 7 p.m see you when it see you then